Well, it turns out defining a bad wizard is tougher than we thought. Even the purest of good guys in the world of Harry Potter have done something they regret. Please. Don't think badly of me when you see it. Yeah, it's not a shock and revelation, but some of these entries are bound to reshape the image of your favorite characters. Even McGonagall ended up on this list. If chosen, there's no turning back. Come, we've saved you a seat. We truly don't know all the dark things Snape did as a Death Eater. He was driven to a dark place during his time at Hogwarts and only continued further down that path till Lily's life was put in danger. Every Death Eater committed serious crimes against the wizarding community, and we don't know exactly what Snape was pardoned for. Give me a reason. I beg you. We do know that he was the one who ended Dumbledore that night. While Snape was technically a hero and redeemed himself in the end, he casted the curse that rocked the Harry Potter fandom. Technically, manipulating a child and encouraging certain students and professors to break rules is already morally ambiguous. Additionally, aiding a dark wizard by making a pact with him to save his life is equally bad. However, we all know what is about to come up. Ariana Dumbledore's tragic end may have been at the hand of Dumbledore. The headmaster himself admits he doesn't know whose curse bounced off and hit his sister. It may have been Grindelwald. I did my waiting! 12 years of it! All right, look, you try escaping Azkaban and going on the run, we'd like to see how far you get without committing some sort of crime. It's amazing that Sirius Black managed to be as well behaved as he was. We only found one truly evil thing he did in his entire time out of Azkaban. We get that he didn't want to be discovered until he figured out where Peter Pettigrew was, but threatening the fat lady was a bit too far for us. The violence displayed on her portrait showed way too much aggression. She deals with dangerous and venomous plants every day. You think just because she's a Hufflepuff that she's soft, but Sprout is far from it. She's a brilliant strategist and a cunning witch. Turns out that the Battle of Hogwarts was a huge proving ground for Pomona Sprout. To help stifle the Death Eaters' encroaching numbers, she used Devil Snare all around the boundary of the school. Yeah, if you remember it from the first film, then you know how deadly it is. Dobby? What are you doing here? Dobby is a free elf, and Dobby is a good elf, most of the time. He did get in some trouble when he attempted to save Harry Potter during Harry's second year at Hogwarts. Most of his ill deeds revolve around Lucius Malfoy, though, so we totally get why Dobby acted out. Dobby went against his master's wishes and helped Harry Potter. He even attacked Lucius after he was freed, which is still assault. There was the time when Mad-Eye turns Draco into a ferret and spins him around for a bit. We know that's against the law for sure. What are you doing? Teaching. However, it was Barty Crouch Jr. that did that. But we wanted to bring it up so you could enjoy watching a clip of it again. Good job, editor! Picture for a moment a darker timeline. A universe in which Fred and George, tortured by disapproval, decided to turn to evil. Sure, it would never happen in reality, but there's certainly a parallel universe out there where they were written to turn bad. The only absolutely rotten thing they did was a massive fireworks show during the Owls before they left Hogwarts forever. Since they did it on Umbridge, we almost overlooked it, but it was against the rules regardless. Molly Weasley is many things. She's a mother, a wife, a talented witch, and Bellatrix Lestrange's worst nightmare. Yes, once again we're back at the Battle of Hogwarts for another entry regarding the destruction of Bellatrix at the hands of Molly Weasley. Look, we're not gonna kid ourselves here. Molly Weasley is a total badass in the film version of that moment, and we love her for it. However, in the most traditional sense, it's still the darkest thing she's ever done. But hey, someone desperately needed to teach Bellatrix a lesson, and we're glad it was Molly. The Lovegood family is pure enjoyment for the most part. When we first meet Luna's father, Xenophilus, he's exactly what we'd imagined him to be. Harry clearly sees good in him, but that trust is quickly snuffed out in Xenophilus's next appearance. The crew of Horcrux hunters come to his house looking for answers regarding the Deathly Hollows. Turns out, Mr. Lovegood is now playing both sides to secure his daughter's safety. He rats out Harry, Hermione, and Ron and betrays their trust. There's nothing quite as bad as a snitch. 
This entry is the first one where a crime wasn't committed, but we want to argue for some misdeeds, so bear with us. James Potter was a great person and a loyal friend. James, Remus, and Sirius all managed to stay on the lighter side of magic thanks to their bond with each other. However, they did get into some trouble. Bullying Snape was a huge blemish on his life's achievements. Imagine what could have been if the roles were reversed. James didn't give Snape a chance to fit in and created a villain from those choices. We're willing to bet you never expected to see Phileas Flitwick on this list. We get it. He's easy to underestimate given his demeanor and knack for charms, not curses. It turns out this professor may be small, but he packs one hell of a punch. Flitwick is an impeccable dueler, and the Death Eater Antonin Dolohov discovers this during the battle. Now, J.K. Rowling writes that Dolohov goes down with a painful scream, but we all know what really happened. Flitwick just got added to the board of good wizards who eliminated bad people. Seamus Finnegan is good at two things, listening to his mom and dad about Voldemort and blowing stuff up. The latter of the two is what we want to focus on for this entry. Again, it's not the worst thing to do on this list, but he certainly did something that normally would be against the law. In order to stop the onslaught of Voldemort forces, Seamus and crew are tasked with blowing up the bridge at Hogwarts. Seamus is an expert at this by now and takes the lead, so technically, he's destroying school property. Me the wretched name, Barty Crouch! We truly sympathize with Barty Crouch Sr. here, and we never thought we'd be saying that in a video ever. The little time we spend with Crouch in the film shows him to be a disheartening figure and broken man. The books show even more darkness in Crouch's life. At the end of the day, Crouch Sr. was actually trying to help the Wizarding World and fight back against Voldemort. That meant turning his son over. While not illegal, it was certainly a dark moment for a character on the side of good and just. Uh, what? Why in the world is Professor McGonagall on this list? What is wrong with this? This must be some kind of misunderstanding. Here, hand me the script real quick. Okay, so she's definitely on the list. Just give us a moment to explain. Oh my goodness. So we come back to the Battle of Hogwarts for this entry. Turns out McGonagall may have knocked down one or two giants during the commotion. Again, while it was sort of self-defense, it's also still a crime. It's a sore-filled reason to put McGonagall on this list, though. There's the false crime we'll never forgive Tom Riddle for that became the reason Hagrid was stripped of his wand. We're not counting that here, and we're not even going to mention it specifically out of respect for our favorite Hogwarts character. That being said, Hagrid did pass the line with Buckbeak in his time as the magical creatures instructor. He put many students' lives in danger more than once, and Draco did suffer an injury during his class. Sure, that was more Draco than it was Hagrid, but we need to keep that in mind. The Cursed Child. Ugh. Do we need to talk about this lackluster excuse for fan fiction? It did bring up one interesting point. What if Cedric Diggory survived? Turns out that's not necessarily a good thing. Apparently, he'd be guilty of more than just dashing good looks. Cedric, according to this timeline, becomes engrossed in dark thoughts after being embarrassed by Harry at the Triwizard Tournament. He becomes a Death Eater, and his biggest crime is destroying Neville before before he can wipe out the last Horcrux. Talk about a real twist of fate. Here comes the first of many entries regarding the Battle of Hogwarts. Look, we know what you're gonna say, but technically the self-defense argument flies out the window when you consider the fact Harry is the one who infiltrates the castle. None of them were looking to avoid a fight at that point. In Neville's case, we weren't going to mention him since Nagini being slain didn't appear to be a big deal. It was just a snake, or so we thought. Now that we know Nagini's truth, Neville definitely committed a crime here. Well, I must say, I'd hoped for better. Now, uh, what do we have here? Ronald Weasley is usually well-behaved and always tries his best to listen to his parents and people in authority. He was a prefect, after all, and only got into minor trouble at school. Usually. However, there is one glaring issue on his track record we can't help but mention. Yeah, who could forget the time he technically committed Grand Theft Auto twice? Not to mention they were seen by muggles in a flying car. However, as far as this list goes, it's probably one of the most minor cases. The 
That's gonna kill me. Oh no. Okay, relax. Hermione is a prefect and all-around diligent student, which made it hard to find any inappropriate behavior during her time at Hogwarts or even away from them. Sure, she does use an incredibly powerful memory charm on her parents, but it was to protect them and not against the law at any point. Hermione did use the time turner though, and even with Dumbledore's permission, three turns do it. It was clearly outlawed. Think about the advantage it put her at when it came to her fifth year owl exams. That's cheating, and time travel is not legal. Harry has always had a knack for finding trouble, but occasionally it brings on more than just mischief. I'll be in my bedroom making no noise and pretending that I don't exist. For instance, does anyone recall the Aunt Marge incident? That wasn't exactly street legal. Oh. Come now, Harry, the Ministry doesn't send people to Azkaban for blowing up their aunt. Plus, there's the whole mess with Dementors later on, where Harry has to stand trial. Those are two minor incidents, but his use of Sectum Sempra is probably the most egregious example. Here he is, both intentionally bringing harm to another student and recklessly casting a spell he doesn't know much about. Man, do we remember the consequences of that poorly made decision? Okay, we need to know. Which entry totally changed your outlook on that character. Share it with us in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to show your support for The Binger. We release new videos daily, so you don't want to miss out on more Harry Potter videos coming up.